What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel today is finally the day you guys have been waiting on this video I'm gonna assume for months now um, so have I. For the longest time, we've been building this 1999 and a half, yes, 99 and a half, 7.3 liter power stroke turbo diesel. Um, everything on this truck, every single body panel on this truck, except the hood, is brand new. We still have, um, I think it's this fender and the other fender. We gotta bolt the um, upper piece in. Couple things that we just kind of left this truck sitting while we were figuring a whole bunch of stuff out. If you've been paying attention closely to this clip, you can also notice something special happened over there. A viewer actually emailed me and said, hey, I wanna come polish the exhaust. Um, you know, I'll be in Ohio from this day, you know, these days to these days, I wanna come by and do it just so he's like a part of the build. And I was like, dude, I was like, if, I mean, if you want it, I mean, it's a lot of work. So Dylan came out here, did this. He actually knocked it out of the park, literally exactly what I was looking for. Um, there's a bunch of fingerprints and water spots on it because we were hit with like a rainstorm the other day. But I'm going to quickly kind of um, hand polish those out. And this can finally be installed. Obviously, 4-inch turbo back, 4-inch to a 7-inch um, stack. Secondly, um, I ordered a stainless elbow to go with this Banks Power exhaust. Wow, this looks good. I mean, it's dirty, but this all this stuff looks so good. It should be plenty to get the exhaust to come obviously down and up and into um, the bed here. And then I don't know about this. I'm hoping one of the pipes just somehow perfectly ends up in line with the 90 degree elbow um, and it can just kind of all just go on, which would be sweet because the elbow slides into the bottom of the stack. So once again, we got a four inch Banks Power exhaust, turbo back, um, to a seven inch, well, a four to seven inch North spec built um, stack, full stainless, polish that out. And also here, this is a different downpipe than usual because under the hood, Banks Power, um, massive intercooler, bigger boost tubes. We've got the uh, Banks cold, Ram Air cold air intake, um, turbo rebuilt, new exhaust housing, new exhaust elbow. Um, obviously more flow coming out of the turbo, wicked wheel in there. Back in there, everything's a little dirty. Gigantic, gigantic wastegate on this guy um, and all of that. So we kind of went through this and kind of put this all together already. It sucks because when I was doing all this and I was looking at it, I was like, should I just put injectors in there? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? I don't know why I didn't back then, but we're doing it now. This truck here, obviously still a work in progress. We converted this thing from an XLT to an extended cab lariat. Yes, all the doors work. This thing's great sound system in the back. If you've either missed this build or obviously we haven't worked on it in a while, so I'm just kind of refreshing you guys. Converted this whole thing. It's a lariat now, door panels and all. This truck has 274,000 274,730, I think that's rolling over to a 7,000 um, miles on it. As you guys saw when we were unboxing these, these are 180cc, 100% over stage two injectors for the 7.3. These are big boys. Um, we're throwing some big sticks in this thing because um, obviously, like I said, this is a project. We wanna have fun with it. We wanna add as much horsepower as we can. Um, 7.3s are very slow. I drove this thing for months thinking, what's wrong with the truck? I, I threw a new IPR in it, a new ICP. This thing didn't get any better. Well, I'm just not used to how slow these things are and truthfully, this thing is just slow. Adding these injectors, one, I think the ones that are in there are 100% factory. I, I, there's no way these things have been changed before. If they have, cool. But if not, um, we're throwing brand new injectors in it for the first time in 274,000 miles. That in itself is gonna wake this thing up. These stage two injectors are good for up to about 400 horsepower when this thing comes with like a whopping 250 or something from the factory. Um, so they're good for up to 400 horsepower. I am using a factory H-Pop. Our friends over at Full Force Diesel pretty much told me when I ordered these that they said, if you're a normal customer, I highly recommend that you just go with a stage 1.5. And that's just upgrading your injectors, giving you more horsepower, that stuff. We went out with a full stage 200 over injector. Factory H-Pop, they said, in a hot, 
tune may not be able to keep up with it, but it won't damage it. So you're not gonna be able to get the full power out of this until we upgrade the H-pop, which is absolutely fine because we have added a lot of air, um, literally like big, gigantic intercooler, big boost tubes, upgraded the turbo, bigger exhaust housing, letting all this flow, cold air intake. We did add probably as much air as you can without actually changing the whole turbo to a bigger size, not just upgrading the wheel. So we've added as much air as possible until we start getting into the, like turbos and stuff. Like I said, they did not recommend this for like a stock setup. However, like I said, I'm doing something like this, I'm gonna do it once. I don't wanna do it twice, I don't wanna do it three times. Doing a job like doing a job like this, it's a bigger job, it's not crazy, obviously. You're gonna see how we do this today. But just starting off directly with stage two injectors allows us to upgrade the truck with cheaper mods than it will to buy a whole nother set of injectors, you feel me? The bigger job, which is an injector job compared to like a turbo, um, might as well put the big guys in now and then adjust afterward. We got a full set of eight of these guys. Uh, we also got a full set of uh, glow plugs. Brand new, because while you're in there, might as well do them. Um, they're cheap enough that if the valve cover is open, you might as well just do these. Speaking of valve cover itself, we've got two new valve cover gaskets. And on top of that, because they're known to go bad, valve cover harnesses as well. This is also an option on full force diesel. It's a fluid extractor. You kind of put this stuff in there, extract the fluid from the cylinders. Um, people do it by cranking. Some people hand turn it over. You could just suck it out. There's a whole bunch of ways, but I, I just wanted to show you guys this as an option um, to get the fluid out of the cylinders before you crank it. Here's the other seven injectors. We've got some more parts for the 7.3 back here that we're gonna have to install too. Um, filler neck there is a thermostat and the uh, thermostat like housing thing i got to do that too but i think i'm gonna order a coolant filter so may pause on that until the coolant filter comes in here is the um hydra obviously these are single shot um injectors so the truck is not gonna like that if we put them in there it's just not the truck needs tuned for single shots so in order to do that we have a hydra um, in here, we have two ways we can do this. We can run it to the pillar gauge because I ordered it um, so I could do that. But pretty much you have your little controller guy here. Adjust your tunes. And then here is your Hydra chip. Um, program with stock, high idle, whisper, daily tow, and race. So number six is all will need. Just kidding. Honestly, I'm interested to see how the whisper, um, the whisper one works because these things do idle quite loud. But here's the chip, and I'll show you guys how to throw that in there. That ain't that ain't anything really. And then obviously, because these are stage two injectors, this thing is gonna have a lot of fuel. So my goal is to do the injectors and attach this exhaust um, now because I don't really want to start this thing up with, um, especially at how long this thing's gonna have to crank for to fire. Um, I don't want to do that where it's all blowing like the exhaust is hammering right into the firewall So I think getting the exhaust installed is definitely on the list before we even fire this unit um, So other than that guys, yeah, I'm gonna run you down how to do these seven three injectors. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon uh, We're gonna knock this thing out and hopefully she'll be running um Running with them stage two single shots here shortly. Um, but that's what's great guys. Like I said, older diesels, things are so simple. And then as you get newer in the years, um, there's just more harnesses, more connections, more vent tubes, stuff like that. But it's the same bare bones. So if you guys are looking to get into like engine modifying and all that, I mean, this is kind of the first kind of big engine build I did here. And um, this wasn't bad, but like I said, a new power stroke, definitely a little more complex than, uh, you know, a Cummins. But first engine build here, um, it's super fun being able to modify the uh, motors of things and get, uh, get a lot of power and stuff out of them. So obviously, if you're looking to get into like engine building and stuff, a lot of the old diesels will make your life simple trying to learn and do things like that. Like I said, I got an old 12 valve there. Um, 7.3, pretty simple, less electronics, but like I said, little tuning and stuff you need to do. Stuff like this, when you get into big, new things, that stuff's just crazy. But my point is, if you're looking to get into it, and you can find yourself a cheap, like, diesel, like I did, this whole build here 
really, build and repair. Um, from full force diesel is I think it's all of this right here is less than 2,500 bucks and you're gonna completely not only wake this thing up but um, perform like preventative and actual maintenance needed uh, to keep this thing run in tip top shape because these motors go over a million miles time and time again. But like I said guys, all of this stuff was purchased at fullforcediesel.com. Um, literally everything, injectors, came with the chip tuned from them. I could buy injector harnesses. I can buy the glow plugs I needed. Um, obviously these big bad boys and uh, brand new valve cover gaskets as well. Um, literally pretty much a full kit to do your injector job and do it the right way. Obviously you can scrap some things like you don't need the harnesses and you don't need the gaskets if you really don't want to. Um, but while you're in there, you might as well do it. That's like you know like i'm saying you're doing a big job take care of it all while you're in there and also while you're in there you might as well do an icp ipr um and stuff like that but if you guys got any questions or anything they're always there to help you out um i had a lot of questions when i was looking for injectors for this and um just emailing the guy over there very knowledgeable like i said they, they were strictly like if you were a normal customer calling in um we would pretty much tell you that this is too much like it's just it's just excessive but over here we like excessive so um that's what we're gonna do today okay first things first we have to actually untune this with the banks tuner this thing was great you know it, it gives you the power and stuff you need but obviously with the injectors going to single shot um the hydra is going to correct that in the truck so we got to get this off Okay, so you gotta dis you gotta disconnect. I mean, you probably don't have to, but you should disconnect both batteries. Also, to get to this side of the uh, you know this side valve cover, passenger side is a little more difficult. But take your uh, boost tube out, intake tube out. There's this um, I don't know how many pin 3032 something crazy connector here. Um, there's a 10 mil on this side. You do this just like the uh, computer down there when we have to install the chip. You do this. It'll come out. Um, also, don't forget your crankcase vent that comes up. This comes off of uh, your air intake as well, and it's easier just to take the tube coming off the turbo out, and we could do this. Um, for those of you gonna ask, valve cover is in fact 13 millimeter. This is a 10. You'll need eights for all of the uh, clamps on your, um, your ring clamps, and then if you have any aftermarket boost tubes and stuff, I had a 12 on those clamps. So you gotta do that, and then we'll get the uh, valve cover off um, in a second. Okay, so one thing I never see on like injector videos, 473s, uh, where people actually talk about these. Um, and I didn't know it was a thing till it actually is quite common because these are everywhere online. You can buy them from any of these. Um, 
places, Full Force sells them, Riff Raff, all of those 7.3 companies, they, they sell these, um, but they're not like an AutoZone part. But this is the, um, it's like the oil diffuser or deflector that connects to the injector. Um, coming out, they do break and they do break often. There's actually another set of injectors behind you that are also um, the same way, but these are actually quite cheap. They're like three bucks, but if you're ordering the injectors, you may want to have just a couple of these on hand just in case. Something to think about um, in case they do break. We luckily, we luckily had a, a buddy who had a whole set um, laying around. So yeah, but these may break. Keep that in mind. They're the uh, diffusers going to the injectors. But now we need to take them off of the old ones and then attach them over here to the new ones. So we're gonna do that and then throw these in the truck. We got all of these four injectors in. Glow plugs are removed, injectors are in, injectors are tightened. Now, what we're gonna do now, there's a million ways to do this and evacuate the cylinders. If you got all the glow plugs out and you crank the motor over, it'll purge all that stuff through the glow plug holes. Now, I think I've seen a lot of stuff on the forums where people are like, you know, they talk about that just cranking it with the key. People do the crank bolt and crank it over at least once by hand. I've seen people who, who have said they crank it over once by hand so many times they've done it. Now they just, you know, bang the key four times um, and then crank it for like 10 seconds and you're good. Um, but there's a million ways to do this. I think the one that people, I guess, were very wary about is just cranking the key. Um, but crank the key don't plug anything in. Uh, the injectors are plugged in underneath the valve cover harness, but the um, this isn't plugged in, and this pin connector won't be plugged in either. So pretty much you're just rotating the motor, nothing should fire, and um, all that stuff should purge. If you were doing this like one injector or something, or one glow plug, or one whatever it be, um, I think that's when you don't wanna crank it with the key, but if they're all out, I think that should be fine, because um, Everyone says that if you don't put this valve cover on, um, they got like oil stains 15 feet up their house. So <laughs> make sure you put the valve cover on, make sure all your glow plugs are out. Um, I've seen people do the whole motor at once, but uh, we're gonna do this side, put it back together, and uh, then take the other side apart and do that side too. So we're gonna purge these cylinders real quick uh, so we can finish up this side. So both the batteries are dead, jump box is pretty much dead. It's actually kind of good for this situation because it did the kind of slow turn that we needed. Uh, now it's hooked up, we're jumping it, and um, it should spin all the way now.
All right, guys, yeah, see, that's all that uh, would have ended up all over the um, shop and the truck, so make sure you put this on if you're gonna do it that way. But I definitely say that uh, they're evacuated. Ethan's uh, always in the back of the videos. I know, every time I watch him, I was like, what the hell, there's Ethan. He always is. <laughs> Wait. Like Walk past, <laughs> walking through, say a comment, leave. Yeah. Yeah, like that one video, I was like, you walked past like you were Sasquatch, because it was just like in the background slowly. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Sasquatch in there. Yeah. Right, maybe that is probably better if I just put it on after the fact. How are you going to get it on? <laughs> All right, guys, so we got one side of the truck completely buttoned. Uh, let me show you what we got going on under the hood. So under here, you guys can see we got the boost tube back in. Cold air intake is still off, so like turbo's wide open right now. The reason being is a lot of people crank these once all the injectors are in to build pressure by not, by not plugging in that injector harness. Also, the fuel pump isn't exactly running right now. Obviously, because the fast, but it's not connected to the battery. So anytime I turn the key or even when I was cranking this, no fuel was going into the, you know, into the cylinders either, so which was pretty good. However, we got the cylinders all evacuated, but this harness back here that actually plugs into the valve cover back here, people will put the whole truck back together, so we'll do that side, same thing with this side, and then you'll crank the truck um, and build pressure without this plugged in. Then you'll plug it in and um, let her rip till she starts. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. We left the cold air intake off just to get that, you know, in there a little easier. But tomorrow we're gonna come in here, rip this whole other side apart, repeat the process, and hopefully while we're in there and that boost tube's off, we can get the um, down pipe on. If I can find myself a uh, V-band clamp. I've got it. So I've got the clamp, I just need a bolt, so I gotta figure that out. And hopefully we get that exhaust on because that'll be a lot easier with that boost tube out of the way, especially with our power elbow from Banks, which actually brings the mounting area for that down pipe deeper um, and lower. Um, I guess deeper into the firewall and further down behind the motor. A clean and efficient exit coming out of that turbo for um, all those exhaust gases. So that is gonna be sick. But uh, yeah, guys, like I said, this wasn't very a complex process, quite simple. Just kind of walking through, moseying on down, um, not rushing, not pushing, and uh, you know, just taking my time. And it's kind of a cake job. Um, like I said, you just spend a lot of time removing parts that aren't the injectors to get to the injectors, but once you're there, truthfully, it's it's quite simple. So, take the other side apart tomorrow, hopefully get that exhaust on, and then this job will be done. Right, guys, day two of the injector install. We're actually running over to the uh, passenger side here. Um, this side over here is a lot more congested. Obviously, same thing, boost tubes gotta come out, but you got a lot of harnesses and uh, these tubes in the way. Also, we already started off by doing this. We got the um, AC bracket unbolted and removed because one, this boost tube, especially it being a, a bigger boost tube, is very tight. So getting this out um, is gonna help the removal of that. And then once that's out, we'll get all this other stuff out of the way. Um, I believe on this upper bolt here, I think there's one hidden bolt on this valve cover that's hard to get to, but, but if you go from underneath, you can see them directly. So. Um, through the fender if you wanna get those bottom bolts out a little easier. But uh, we're gonna start tearing into this and uh, get these injectors in.
So guys, everything was going well. Very, very well, especially on this side, surprisingly. I don't know how or why, but surprisingly, passenger side was going literally perfect until glow plug number seven. Um, first of all, a lot of carbon buildup on it. I did wipe it down. This thing was very thick. You can see there's a lot of carbon on the tip, a lot of carbon on this middle shaft here. It was very tight coming out. It literally looks like all these threads somehow ended up mushroomed. I don't know if that was going in, going out. I don't know if this has ever been replaced. I don't know if this like was unscrewed, taken out, realized it couldn't come out before just like I just dealt with and then it was like screwed back in crooked i don't know however this is what i find super strange with this truck and i guess part of the joy of any used or old vehicle look at this look at this glow plug perfect look at the difference that is so bizarre so I, that's what i'm saying is like either this truck got seven glow plugs or this one was stuck last time and they just said screw it um we got it out though but that literally makes me as I fall off this ladder. But that literally makes me think that somebody literally got in here, started a project, couldn't figure it out, gave up, put it back in. Um, obviously, like, that's just frustrating. Or if this was taken to a shop to do this job, um, that's very, um, very unprofessional. That's just, I can't believe that. Literally seven out of eight glow plugs, and this one was clearly clearly stuck like I, I couldn't get this out forever i was fighting it i was prying it this is exactly how it came out vice grips um i ended up getting it pulled and it got stuck put some deep creep in the hole pushed it in pulled it out deep creep in the hole pushed it in pulled it out deep creep in the hole pushed it in and then just pulled tight and it came it eventually popped it did take a ton of force but this is what happens is um they'll swell up and they'll get stuck but um we did have probably about seven brand new ish glow plugs so i'm definitely gonna hang on to these um in a pinch for somebody because you know they are only like 11 bucks a piece but these look pretty much brand new especially if this is what came out of the last cylinder so the real <laughs> The rear cylinder too, I also already evacuated with the pump because it was pretty full. So I sucked out what I could and I'm gonna evacuate the rest with the crank and uh, we should be good to go. All right, because that glow plug took so long yesterday, we literally just called it a night after that and plus, if you do something like this, you need to clear the cylinders. There's nothing wrong with letting it sit overnight. Honestly, a lot of the, a lot of the tech sheets recommend if you're at that point in the night where you could just crank it in the morning, let it happen because a lot of it will actually seep, you know, down, um, and thus giving you less to like expel out of the cylinder. But we're getting this thing jumped right now. We'll get this cranked over. Like again, four four to five taps of the key, and then crank for ten seconds. Should be good, we'll pop the valve cover back off, throw the new glow plugs in, connect the harness, bolt it all down, get this thing put back together, um, and then we're actually gonna get the exhaust put on, because like I said, I don't wanna crank this thing and start this thing, especially sending all that fuel, um, and have it go right to the firewall. So, when we crank this thing, like I said, I wanna have the exhaust on it, um, that means we'll put the full four inch on it, turbo back down pipe, and then we will drill the hole for the stack, and then let her crank. Well, look at all the oil concentration that's shot out. Well, that's all from number seven. Number one over here, barely even touched because obviously everything drains back. So pulling that rear injector first, whether what side you do it, kind of keeps all the oil out of the uppermost cylinders. So um, all you gotta really do is clear one. So it worked.
down and the hangers right there. have actually been done for like a couple days now but because we kind of completely rebuilt this truck from the ground up um, it never had the exhaust on it and obviously we did get that seven inch stainless stack installed it looks incredible um, like I said I still need to do a couple things like these bed rail caps those are so frustrating not being on here but um, like I said, because we completely rebuilt this entire truck, um, we had to install the exhaust. So that looks super good. Coming off these traction bars, look at this. Thing is just crazy. It honestly looks so good. I didn't like. I don't know why I decided to do a completely polished one, but I'm so glad I did. Cause look at that coming through there, over here through the frame, and uh, honestly, if you really got underneath here, you'd see it all. But having that exhaust fully polished is just. It just stands out, man. That looks so good. Obviously, over here, every time I stack a truck, I don't use flex pipe. I hard 90 them all, and yes, we did get a stainless one as well. So everything's like full hard pipe all the way up. But yeah, don't use flex pipe there. Make it an actual exhaust kit. And obviously seven inch bed stack, four inch uh, inlet down there, bolted down. The bed's a little um, dented here. Just like I said, we completely rebuilt this, but this is a, uh, a bed from Florida, rust free. And in doing that, it came out of a, uh, a work truck. So the bed floor was obviously just used, but it's clean, it's a clean bed. So. Um, that's what we used in this and we had to kind of space we kind of had to add a few spacers to level it out but this thing looks so good and if you guys were using this as like a normal injector install like I said you could probably do that in one day if you really hustled this truck from factory is tuned to run split shot injectors so now if we fire this up it's it's not gonna you know it'll run trust me it'll run we got this thing fired up, but it will not fire right. Um, people do that all the time. We'll sit there and they'll start the truck and it'll get this, you know, the single shots firing, um, but it will not run right whatsoever. You need to tune the truck to, to you know, accommodate your new upgrades, like those single shot injectors and all the firing pattern and all that, it'll, you know, it'll get it right. 
So well, the last thing we have to do before we fire this up, like I said, if you did normal injectors that were still split shot, not single shot, you could, you know, hop right in. But because we did this upgrade, we have to tune it. And like I said, everything over at Full Force Diesel, they take care of everything you need to do exactly what I'm doing. You can customize it any way you're doing, you know, bigger injectors, smaller injectors, stage one and a half hybrids. Um, there's so many options, but like I said, everything can get taken care of at full force. Like, it's incredible. Um, and obviously the Hydra, that's the controller, but we're gonna be installing this um, from full force. And it'll come up here and uh, replace this DP tuner um, that was on the truck when I got it. We're going to get this Hydra installed. Because this truck has already had the DP tuner, it's the same concept. It's down here. And as you can see, I have it the hole taped off right now that was before, but it's this. There's a harness in the wheel well. Uh, I think it's like an 8 mil. Take it off. There's two 7s right here. This case will come out, you'll pull that out. And where that hole's drilled, they've already modified this in the past to accommodate what we're about to do. Um, but I'll show you when we get it open. Obviously, I'm lucky to still have this truck in pieces. Without these wheel liners in there, you got uh, better access to everything we just did, valve cover bolts, um, you know, getting better prying ang angles on your injectors, stuff like that. But also on the driver's side here, this is the bolt up in here um, that kind of takes that computer out from underneath the dash and we'll be able to install the chip. There's a 10 mil right here on this, this connector. It bolts in, um, but with the liner out, you can reach it right here, which is super easy instead of reaching down underneath the hood and doing all that stuff, trying to go through all these harnesses behind brake boosters and whatever, or you can just do this. I already had to do this once when I was taking the DP tuner off. So luckily I know already, but okay. So when you screw it out fully, this whole connector comes out um, with that bolt. And then underneath the dash, it's a seven mil. It's gonna take that black case off and then you'll also be able to slide the computer this way. To me, I find this super bizarre how they did this back when they made these 7.3s, but you pretty much need to clean all, there's like a resin or something that comes on these pins, and you need to clean them off really good so your chip um, can go in. Um, I'm just gonna wipe any dust off before I stick the new one on. But yeah, here's your tuned chip. I think this is how they uh, upload it and stuff. But this is, you see, that many teeth and like that many teeth here. Well, that's how this all matches up. Okay, and then now you take that, uh, that connector, whether it's the one coming from the gauge pod or the one that you're gonna connect to like the, the dash clip. Um, we're gonna plug that into the back of here. Fold this ribbon cable backwards and pretty much slide her right in. Like so, and uh, put that on. No, we don't do that. <laughs> and cause this isn't connected, shove this back through the hole slider under and then now boom there's that and also did I mess it up one more time <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> okay third times the out third times the charm at least this time we don't need to unplug anything besides this one more time Boom. Then you can slide this back in. I didn't expect it to fire. 
I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't expecting it to fire. That's crazy. I can't believe it fired. All right, guys, so I actually just kind of cranked the key um, because I was like, oh, we're going to have to build pressure, so don't even bother filming it. But I guess with the way I we did the priming, this thing fired like right up. And as soon as it kind of got going, I just kind of cut it off. Probably not what you want to do. But let's fire this thing up, let her idle. Um, it's going to smoke like crazy because of all the stuff in the cylinder. So, uh, and it's probably going to haze for a minute. But uh, let's get this thing fired up and uh, see how she runs. guys so it's gonna be like the first drive of this thing we're not gonna go far um, we're just gonna go like around the block and stuff test this thing out see where uh, you know see what we got uh, going with these new injectors I can say in the cab it sounds a million times more quiet like at idle which is super weird let's take this down the road I got this thing all the way up in tune six plus the fast plus all the stuff we did in this intercooler boost tubes turbo the whole nine um, this is the moment we've been waiting for, for like a long time. First of all, I said I think one of the calipers or something is hanging up because right now we're inching forward off the brakes. I don't know, it should be rolling, but um, I don't know why it does that. I might need two front calipers and rotors, but let's see how she, let's see how she rolls, because yeah, you hear that? And I don't want to get on it crazy right now either because uh, 
gotta give it some time to like kind of work its way through. That one caliper on this truck has to be hung up because like I'm not even hitting the brakes, but like this thing's like wow. It's got the power there, but it just doesn't want to move. I think this front caliper over here is just stuck. All that we rub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was like, but I also feel like, what is this? It's a stock. Yeah, see, in reverse, there's more power in reverse because it's, it's like there's weight behind it, but the other way, you're like. Ford's man, Ford stuff. I think I just blew the tranny or the torque converter, one of the two. We gotta get this back, kinda, I, yeah. There's no reverse anymore. Um, all drive gears, but it's in neutral. But when the truck's running, neutral is also drive. So, gotta move this back so we can steer it in. And actually get this to a place where we can tow it and then go pull the tranny. So, uh, yeah, that's fun, but uh, let's keep pushing. Don't worry, just blew it. <laughs> This thing sounds absolutely incredible. She's idling so good, so strong. And then obviously back here.
Uh, looks like all the oil came out, obviously. But um, gonna have to wipe this up, clean this up. This is this is a mess. Um, they say it's gonna take like a minute for it to actually all kind of get removed from the cylinder and cylinders and stop hazing. Some people say three hours and it'll stop hazing around doing all that. But uh, yeah, that's crazy. Like ever since I bought this truck, I knew it drove a little funny. Um, but that's so weird that literally that's the second truck I've like built with an automatic trans and I shredded them both. 7.3 and my 5.9, uh, my 06. Shredded, shredded that 48 um, instantly and then this one. Um, I think some, all you Ford people out there, um, all the gears, like I said, all the gears are forward. Let me shut this off. Shut this off for you guys. But yeah, all the gears are forward. So even in reverse, it goes forward. The shifter linkage does move on the tranny. It goes all the way up. When it's like wide open throttle, yeah, wide open throttle, it doesn't hit like first gear, pound, second gear, pound, third gear, pound, torque converter lock up and go. It like slips all the way and then the torque converter hits and then goes. But um, yeah, there's no reverse anymore. And I don't know, so I might have to get this thing built, but I wanna see, and like, like I said, I love when my tranny shift hard. Like I got my, uh, 5.9, the 48 RFE built by Redline Diesel in Ohio, and that thing right out the lot, it was just banging gears, and I could not, I could not just say better things about that tranny. So I'm gonna do some research, see what I can do, see what we can, um, <laughs> see what we can, um, you know, do to this, get this thing actually moving right and um all of that so like i said unfortunately i guess there there you have it stage two injectors and like i said it's a, it should be a lot more smoky than it is but i think with the uh turbo upgrades the giant boost tubes the giant intercooler and all that um this thing this thing actually smokes very little which is actually pretty good but yeah i thought this thing was going to smoke like a freight train and be an absolute mess the entire time but uh, it actually kind of holds up and i think all that air we added actually legitimately helps this thing clean up which is super good but there you have it guys yeah stage two injectors in a 1999 7.3 liter power stroke and um i did get an over boost code if that matters it did come up with a service engine soon code it does go away if you change the tune or you just drive normally it does go away um, but yeah, over boost, which means I think that's over 29 PSI, which is crazy for this thing. Um, <clears throat> and, and all of that. So we got a, we got a unit on our hands, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Like I said, anything in this video that we did pretty much full force diesel guys, um, they'll get you hooked up with adding power to your, you know, your 7.3 as well. That's, it's just, that's absolutely crazy. I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> I didn't think that would happen that fast, but you know the old saying with Ford, found on road, dead. There we go. Blue Atrani, they still stand up to their name no matter how much uh, and how pretty they are or what you do. They still suck. I'm just kidding. I love this thing, but it's like it's just typical stuff. I've had very few issues uh, with my comments compared to like this, but... Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, shoot a thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please get down there, click subscribe. Drop me a comment if you haven't already. Take care. We'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know what we're going to be doing, but I think we're going to be pulling the tranny on this thing, um, getting this thing built. We also need new calipers um, all the way around, I think, because this one back here, just disregard all the oil that shot out of the stack. But um, look at this caliper. There is zero friction on that. And then this one is just like literally gouging itself out. So um, that's half the power problem in this truck. I can tell you that, that um, I can't even lay down all the power. Plus, I think this truck one wheel peels, but I think after this caliper is unlocked, I think it'll spin both of them, which would be sick um, and all that. But yeah, unfortunately, I think the tranny is toast, but um, torque converter, something's gone. Uh, we're gonna get that rebuilt and uh, get this thing scooting here shortly but damn i can't believe that anyways guys take care and i'll see you in the next one